Hey guys, this is Fady from Harvey Productions, and today I have my friend Richard Town here with me. Hi. And uh, Richard is an absolute phenomenal drummer. Uh, we've known each other for 10 plus years now, and the last couple of days we've been in the studio here uh, tracking drums for a couple of projects we're working on. Today I want to take that time to talk about Richard's drum setup. I'm going to have him explain a lot about his setup, as well as we'll walk through a mic setup and how we're miking his kit and all the channels and samples of that as well. Uh, Richard, first, tell us a little bit about yourself really quick. Well, my name is Richard Town. I've been drumming for all my life. Uh, my first playing on the drums was when I was three years old. That sounds a lot, but usually where I'm from, they put you on the person's knee and you bang away at the drums during like an offering song, church offering song. And then they say, oh, Richard, he played the drums. And, and you feel all great about that. Um, come from a more black gospel tradition. Um, there's like the all the chops and different things like that. Um, expanded after that. Um, I'm at a place now where I play 14 uh, hours of live music every week. And so that crosses all sorts of genres. So I've had to be stretched and expanded and all that stuff. So, and uh, I get to meet guys like that and, and the word that I do. So like that, <laughs> like Fadies. And... That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you tell us about your kit? Which kit are you using in the studio in the last couple of days? Uh, this is from a company called PDP. If many of you may know DW, uh, it's a sister company, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal drums. And DW at home, this one right here is my workhorse. I love it. I take it everywhere. It sounds so super great. It's their twisted ivory color. I don't know if you can see the color right now, but it's it looks so Amazing, got great depth, great great articulation. Um, solid is maple, just all around amazing kit. What kind of genres would you think would work better for this specific drum kit? What's the sizes? What are the sizes are you using for kick and toms? Right now, because I was playing more of a gospel track, I was I used my 10 and my 16. Some people can't really see that um, that kind of difference in depth but usually for gospel stuff you want like a, a, a high tom and then you want like a deep tom to be able to um, mesh with the kick really well and make some of those chops work great uh, this one has worked across multiple genres i played rock tracks with it it just all depends on the tuning it's a really really versatile kit if i was to play a rock track i might have more toms but i would usually probably use a 12 rack which sits a lot deeper and makes it more cohesive for that type of job what about your symbols walk us through what are you using symbols wise for this track uh i am currently a dream symbol artist so i use dream symbols i i like the again the articulation on the bell there's a dream energy ride there's a dream um well, energy crash. Now, don't tell anybody. I did some aftermarket uh, work on those. Uh, can can I shout out a guy? Yeah. I'll shout out a guy. Um, Midwest Custom Symbol Repair. He he did um, some whole work on it for me. Phenomenal stuff. And like his, I, I won't go into that. But the point is, uh, what you see there, it makes the symbol a little more airy. And it, and it gives like a wider, just kind of a broader sound because sometimes you, if you get a cymbal, it can sound a little clunky. And I just didn't, I didn't want that particular sound for that particular cymbal. So I got that and got some work done on here. So a lot of my stuff is a little more custom be, because of that guy. So, but I really liked it for this project because I got a mix on the right side of for something a little more broad that you wouldn't think you would hear in gospel, but it actually sits really well within the track and is not obnoxious. And so I just don't want to be obnoxious with my symbols. He can explain more about what that means from an engineer side. Absolutely. And then uh, your snare, I know you just recently bought this snare. <laughs> You've been loving it in the studio. That sounds incredible. Tell us a little bit about what snare are you using and how are you tuning it? Uh, that is a DW Performance Series uh, snare drum. It is their 5.5. That means five and a half inches deep by 14. Uh, I was playing at a project in Vermont, love Vermont, um, and I heard this snare drum. I tuned it up the way I wanted it, and I was like, oh, my gosh. it was That one wasn't mine, but I got it, and I bought it. I use um, uh, Remo 
Vintage Emperor on the top and uh, Ambassador Hazy on the bottom. And it it just gives me, again, I love, the, I love this word. It's just a great word, articulation, that I can hear all my little hits. However, it's still, because of the construction of the drum, retains some depth to it. And so it's not like a piccolo standing like, ding, 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 when, with the track. It, it has real depth and um, it gives feeling and I want to be able to express with the drum and it's a very expressive drum. Okay, so let's talk about how we mic'd this kit. We kind of went all out for this couple projects we've been working out and we've been experimenting with uh, a couple different options for room mics and mono overheads and stuff like that. So let's just going to walk through it and I'll walk you guys through all the placements of the mics and which mics I'm using and what chain everyone is going through. So for kick in, we're using an Aventone SSM mic. I've had this mic for a few years now. Absolutely like it. Um, and it, it gets some warm tone to it. And I'm running it through a 1073 and an 1176. That way I can get the punch from the kick. For kick out, we're using the Latin Audio Atlantis. I absolutely love that mic. I'm using it on the neutral feature. And then I'm getting all that round kick drum and then the sub drum tone out of it. This one is running through the UA set 4710D on tube. So that way I can get a little bit of that tube saturation with the 1176 on it. For hi-hats, this is one of the tricks I've learned before. I honestly like the Shure SM7B on hi-hat because that way I can get rid of a lot of the, it's a dynamic mic versus condenser and it's a little warmer. So it tones down the brightness of the hi-hat and I don't get a lot of the snare and cymbals in it as much as other ones. Also, that is something I do appreciate. It, and then I, um, I run the hi-hat mic facing outwards versus facing inwards. So if it looks away from the snare drum, because I want to get the least amount of bleed into the hi-hat. I know that 7B is a low gain mic, so I use it with a cloud lifter. So that way I make sure that I'm getting a good gain without any floor noise on it. For overheads, um, experimenting this time is actually my first time to use this for overheads. And I kind of really like it. I'm using the Townsend. L22 by Universal Audio now in stereo mode. And um, I'm just, uh, I went back into the plugin to choose which one we like. And for his kit, I ended up using the 251 for it. And uh, it sounds amazing. I, I love the versatility. I love that being able to adjust how close it is to the kit, how far it is from the kit, the stereo width of it. Yeah, that, and that's within the software. That's within the software. I can do proximity effect a little closer, a little further, how wide that kit is and then how narrow that kit is for overheads wise. And that's great because I also have a mono overhead mic and I'm using the Vanguard Tube V13 and it's pairing both them together. So I can grab a wide crisp stereo image from the L22 and then a mono tube, more like saturated tone from the mono overhead from the Vanguard and then pairing those together, I can get a lot of that uh, full sound capturing his toms, kick and snare. Mm -hmm. I moved the Vanguard a little bit further back on purpose because I wanted to grab less cymbals and more kick and snare. And I put the overhead mics a little closer to the cymbals because I wanted more cymbals out of this. And that way I have more control over how much of his snare is coming through that mono overhead. I also ended up adding a Lone Audio LS 208, which is their uh, version of the 7B basically. I love that mic. It sounds great, but I put it and you guys can see it's almost facing at Richard's knee and snare right over there. And the purpose, it actually captures a lot of the kick and snare in very, very, very little overheads and toms and hi-hat. Okay, guys, let me jump in here. I was not a believer. I was like, what is this sorcery? I was like, oh, you're doing your little producer tricks and trying to fake me out. But he actually showed me the difference. And I was, I was astounded. It added so much depth and so much energy to what I was playing. It was, it was amazing. And that one is running through um, the unison from Apollo, the 1073, with an LA-2A on it from the Apollo. And then for toms and snare, today I experimented with, honestly, I tried the Slate ML2s. And I was just wanting to um, experiment with, with that. I've heard great things about it. I've owned, I have four sets of it uh, for a while. I haven't used them in a long time. So we ended up using uh, the ML2s on stair top, bottom, Tom 1, and Tom 2. I run them clean into the UA Apollo, 
no unison, no coloration, anything. So that way I can re-sample those from uh, the virtual mix rack from Slate, and then I can choose which one I would uh, like it to be. And then for room mics, I ended up using two room mics. I used the Cascade Fathead, and that's the one with the Lindell transformer. And I placed that one right about here, which is on a lower, it's about three feet off the ground. And then it faces the kick and the snare. Um, this was a ribbon mic, so it's figure eight, and uh, it captures a lot of the low end and the mid range. It's, it's a very mid heavy mic, and then I'm getting a lot of kick and snare out of it. And I like that because that way I can parallel compress that. Those are passing through my Chandler LTD, which is an original Neve 1073, as well as my API 2500 unit. And that way I can get a little bit of that hammer, slam hammer uh, compression, and then I can parallel compress that with the overheads. And then the second room mic that we're using uh, is in Neumann. And you guys will see it in staring at me. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see it in the B-roll videos. Um, so this is the Neumann U89. A lot of people are not familiar with that mic. It's basically the sister of the U87, and I'm sure everybody uses the U87. I, the, U80, <laughs> the U89, the, it came after the U87, and the whole point was... And the 87 is so crisp, but a lot of people complained about the highs. It was a little bit too piercing. And then the 89, the capsule in it is slightly different. It has more tamed highs. So it actually compensates for the brightness of the 87. And um, it's becoming a very famous mic for female vocals because it, it doesn't, because um, it tames a lot of that high end. But then also for orchestral instruments and brass section, all that kind of stuff, because it's so bright and piercy and then this one tames and compensates for that a little bit has multiple polar patterns i'm using this one on omni as a room mic and i'm setting it inside a panel to grab more like a, a darker room tone and that's kind of what i was going for and then this one i paired it into my tube pre the 610 from uh, universal audio so that way i can get more, a little bit more tube saturation on it as well as an 1176 uh compressor i think this is a full run through into how we mic'd uh this kit um i want to say a big thanks to richard here being with us and um we'll uh be doing another video on my screen share and then i'll show you i'll walk you guys through all the channels of what we have and you get to listen to each one of those uh, mics individually i hope this was helpful richard thank you for being with us and for rocking on drums this weekend we'll see you guys for another video